Hi folks, welcome to another Wednesday widget. So we just got back from our vacation last night. Today's Tuesday, this video is going live tomorrow. And unfortunately, we don't have the equipment quite up and running yet in the new shop, although the electrician was here and it's on my list to do today. So instead, what we're gonna do is actually a video recap of some of the trip because uh, we've got to check out a machine shop, we got to do some factory tours, and we got to see an awesome museum. First off, we're gonna do a quick shop update here and talk about a couple other things, then some sort of, sort of, uh, I wouldn't say it's instructional, but it's certainly informative and fun uh, stuff about our trip. And at the end, I thought I'd throw in some total stuff of what we did for fun, you know, Oktoberfest, uh, BMW, visiting the factory, and hiking around Europe, all that kind of stuff. So definitely a little bit off topic. We'll get back on topic real quick uh, this week and next week with some really good stuff. Uh, so what's going on? Fusion 360 has pushed out some really cool updates that I haven't had a chance to check out yet about uh, modeling and rendering and, and simulation stuff. So I'm super excited to get into that as well as Lathe. Tormach released the 440. I am really excited about it. And I'll be honest, at first I thought, is this, where, is this what I'm, is this the machine I was waiting for them to make? And here's what I love. We need a second machine with Jared coming on full time. I, I'm, we're a mill shop, I'm a mill guy. I need to have a machine that I, is mine and he needs one that he can use. And the 440 is perfect because the reality is most of what we do is within a vice. So the travel size, not a problem. Um, I had a chance to play with one in Wisconsin a few weeks uh, a few weeks ago, but I haven't really put one through its paces yet. We are getting one though. I don't know exactly when it'll be here, but soon. Super excited to dive in. Uh, great machine, a great value, and all I could think was, oh my gosh, I wish this was out when I started this whole thing 10 years ago in New York City with the tag. Um, that's what gets me excited about this machine. On that note, I've been doing some sort of thinking and soul searching about the business plan and the direction of where I want to spend my time and take this company. And the 440 might actually play an interesting role in that, which uh, I'm going to keep it under wraps for right now. But stay tuned because I'm really excited about, about what's to come. So quick shop tour and then we'll uh, head over to Europe. Not really a ton to update. We did get the hood moved over and we are going to run the welding and plasma on the left side of the room, which I'm excited about, and the right side, which is a mess mostly because electricity work uh, is going to be sort of the machine shop side. While I was gone, Jared made a great steel rack, which uh, will work for here and hopefully work for if and when we are in a different space. And that was the other challenge we had was we didn't want to spend a ton of money on a short-term lease space running electrical stuff, particularly from there all the way over to there. So what we did was we had some outlets run to that corner there and we can plug in the welders and even the plasma safely. Uh, for, we don't use the plasma that often so it shouldn't be a problem in terms of trip hazard and I didn't want to spend quite a bit of money to run it through that drywall and so forth. We already had some three phase and, and bigger outlets over here so that'll be fine. For the Tormox, the um, transformer buck booster things came in which will get me the correct voltage you know, going sort of from 208 three phase up to, I think it's 240. Got a lot of cleaning to do. And then hopefully, you know, tomorrow or Wednesday, we're back to the normal grinding, uh, grinding down some work here. We found a machine shop, check it out. So we stumbled upon this machine shop in a small town in Austria. It was great. They were super busy. They were really nice. We didn't try not to take up too much of their time, but they were very proud of their subspindled live tooling MCO lathe. And they had a smaller lathe on the left and an older Bridgeport VMC back in the corner there. And they were busy, they were hustling. Wow, I just walked into this room. This is uh, unbelievable. Oh my God, this is incredible. Oh my gosh, look at this, how cool is this? My thought was that this is a decal machine because well, I don't know a lot about them. But what I've heard about decal machines is they're so versatile, but so many different ways to control. But it says Mayo, and now what I'm wondering is, is that DMG? I think which is now Decal Mayo, something more. Funny that that says West Germany on it though. But check out the old school DRO Heidenhain DRO on it. Um, cool. What's this guy? Oh, Pantograph, it looks like. I mean, this is ridiculous. 
I love uh, American museums. We've got some great ones, but nowhere do I ever recall seeing a, <laughs> what appears to be a four axis, potentially five axis, because it actually looks like the head rotates as well. <laughs> are you, you know, vertical machines, and are you kidding me? How cool is this? I'm, by the way, very enthusiastic right now. I just feel like I don't want to talk too loud because it's kind of a respectful, quiet, oh my gosh, look at this turret blade. How cool is that? Pretty good turret tool setups too. It doesn't look like it's just academic, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Gosh, I wish, I'll have to look. You know what, maybe, maybe they run them at a certain time of day. I was trying to read the uh, instructions or, or museum guide. Again, are you kidding me? An incredible description of how linear motion, you know, measures distance traveled, including, including not only a description of how glass scales work, but then look, they've got a set here, talks through how they use them, and when you move this, you're moving the uh, DRO over there. Freaking awesome! Oh, it just gets better to hear. A great description of how spark erosion or EDM works, which honestly I feel like is either misunderstood or often not well explained. A nice little graphic, and then you've got some really cool EDM dies or electrodes. And if you look right over here, we've got the machine itself. It's just incredible. There's a <laughs> Kaltenbach cold saw and older lays and you know, older versions of automatic lathes. And, you know, you know, manual knee, mill. Um, I mean, I, I almost feel bad. My, my, I almost feel like, I gotta say, you just gotta come here. And this is incredible. Look, how many museums, you know, that have an overhead bridge crane? Awesome. Are you kidding me? Now we're in the materials testing section? This is uh, awesome. Germany, you, you win this one. Not everything is in English, but uh, that's uh, certainly okay. This is incredible. And again, if you guys, if anyone happens to have the opportunity to come to Munich, Germany, absolutely swing by the, this Deutsches Museum. Just keeps getting better. Now we're here in the casting section of the museum, which is walking through different types of casting and explaining it and, and how it's used with you know a sweet palette of uh, looks like some V twelves right here. Amazing! This is awesome. Okay, th th this is getting ridiculous. Now we're in the deep drawing exhibit, walk walking through, taking a piece of aluminum or sheet metal and drawing it out. Unbelievable. Twice a day they host live tutorials on casting and here this gentleman is unfortunately all in German and my German is conversational at best but literally molten aluminum pouring it in molds showing adults and there were a number of young kids here. This is what we need folks. This is how you get kids fascinated with engineering and science. And then I went to the tour at, again twice a day for the machining program and unfortunately uh, this room was very dark and likewise the uh, wonderful host didn't speak much English but here we've got an overhead belt system turning a large drill in this example and then look at this saw sharpening machine incredible this is I believe from the 1800s uh, I wish the lighting was better this machine was just amazing now we're in the middle room which is the up to like 1920 to 1980 and it's an automatic what, what do you call this? A manual automatic blade, so no CNC or motorized, but it was turning small replica Olympic towers of the Munich Olympic Tower. Amazing. Oh. Now we're finally on the modern room, and I mean, I was just mind blown. We've got everything I love in life here, or in, wor in the working life here. You've got Kuka robots automatically feeding these plastic caps into this Emco machine, which is actually milling logos into them, which I think I cut to here in a second. And you'll see here in a second as it goes down the line, it, it takes them out of the pneumatic or hydraulic vise, and it puts a magnet into it, moves it to the next station, presses the magnet in, and then dumps it out, and they let us take it home. Just, oh, uh, folks, I mean, this is just what life's all about. I was on hog heaven here, so cool. 
So again, here we're picking up, flip it over so that we can receive the magnet, which are in those hopper tubes in the back, clear hopper tubes in the back there, and drops the magnet, or picks one up, drops it in. Next station, you know, I forgot to look at how the belt system works. It's indexing these, shuttling them along. Here, this is cool, it rotates it around. Small pneumatic press, pushes the magnet in, puts it back in its carrier. Here it flips it back over, mostly just for fun. And on the next station it drops it down to a feeder for the wonderfully happy museum kid, or in my case adult, who can take it with them. That's so cool. We are here at, uh, where are we, Pauliner? In, uh, in Munich, near Marienplatz, and we've had, had a good time, to, here we go, uh, with the meetup. And I thought we'd give a chance everybody to say hello. Hello, my name is Paula. Hi, my name is Daniel, and I make chess pieces on my small menu lane. Thank you. These are, these are incredible. Look at the, the rook, no, castle. What is it? I think in English, Schloss? Castle, castle. Castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Hi, I'm Martin. Hi, I'm Lenny. Hi, I'm Ben. Sweet. Well, hope you hope everybody enjoyed the uh, vacation video, and I'm actually about to head to the Deutsches Museum. You've probably already actually seen the footage that I'm hoping I can film uh, there in a minute. So take care, folks. See you soon. Perhaps silly, but this is an example of a residential plumbing system in a larger home, albeit. But look how beautiful and organized it is. Again, just just different. Something I, I noticed that stood out. Here we're in Munich at the BMW World, and they were driving the, the I don't know what they call the three-wheel thing around, though. Uh, so that was kind of cool. Again, also kind of funny that uh, they were okay doing that indoors. I feel like something that's nice. You don't see as much over here in the States. Here we are at a small Austrian brewery where we had a chance to have a great tour. These are the big copper kettles, which I thought were really impressive. And you can see uh, the, all the automated controls here. I think they were able to run it with only a handful of people, which is which is pretty amazing. And they have, they're still a relatively small brewery, so they have these patch panels that you see here where they can use different pipe lengths to actually move the liquids between different you know routes depending on what type of beer they're doing or what they need to do next. Here's my uh, buddy Ernst and Scott flanking yours truly, enjoying a mid-tour beer. I am always a sucker for robots, so I was surprised at the end of, or of the tour to see just how many robots they had in here, just effortlessly flipping and handling these full kegs. Just amazing. This was a machine that took the recycle bottles and undid the caps and then dropped the caps onto this conveyor before they were cleaned. And then again, just awesome to see how the robots help handle uh, all the automation and flow and output of the factory. A pretty cool photo of just how much beer there was there. It was more impressive in person, but it was a lot. And then what I thought was interesting was they use side-loading trucks, which makes so much sense when in terms of the effort of loading a truck. And then they have these, I would call them special, certainly different forklifts that can actually hold two pallets at the same time. So if you see this guy coming out, that's a left and a right pallet, obviously full of, of delicious beer. And... No problem at all. He can, he'll set it down in the in the front or the left side, and then the next uh, pallet will actually just push that pallet over to the other side. So oh, that was kind of interesting. Here we are, Oktoberfest. We had a great time. It is so much fun. There's this word gemütlichkeit about just happiness and coziness and enjoying the festivities. And we actually we kept it pretty under control. We didn't get too carried away, but. So much fun. I, I, the music is great. The food is great, although I will admit after 14 days away in Germany, I was missing my vegetables. And really just a great time. Here's the first night we went. We had a table with this amazing food. Here people are starting to enjoy singing and everyone's sort of dancing up on the tables and everyone's in their outfits, lederhosen and dirndls. The, the bathrooms were hilarious with the uh, attractive women uh, inspecting certain things out. And then afterward, we went to this game amusement park part of the Oktoberfest where they had this thing called the Devil's Wheel where they try to throw people off. And in this example, the guy was 
thought he'd made it, but they bring this ball out and kind of knock you off, and it looked pretty fun. Earlier in the week, my wife and I had gone to the Berlin Zoo, and amazing zoo. One of the amazing things is they fed the animals um, real meat, and you were able to go and watch it, and seeing this lion roar like this, it was deaf, deafening when you were in the room with it. Just absolutely uh, amazing, just something I feel like you don't get to see very often. And certainly nothing I've seen in a U.S. zoo. Here's a picture of my wife and me enjoying a dinner in Berlin at the, uh, I think we were at the Augustiner. Our Austrian hosts put out two American placemats for us uh, while they served in a traditional Austrian breakfast, or no, dinner, with Speck, which is this sort of smoked bacon, just delicious, very tasty. And here we're just driving through the Austrian countryside. Just what a beautiful country. The mountains are so high and sh steep. This was a hilarious. It was an Audi A3, a really small Audi sports car, towing a, towing a trailer with a huge Weber grill for some exhibit. And again, just beautiful mountainside. And last we were at the ski resort Kitzbühel, albeit with no snow really, and we actually hiked up the downhill course. It was a two and a half hour hike. Amazing, a bit of a workout. And then we took the gondola back down, as you see here. But unfortunately, it was a little cloudy and not great weather. We were actually going to do this thing called Via Ferretta, I think, which is a type of like mountain climbing where you're hiking but hooked into secured ropes in case so you can't fall because it's too steep. But Kitzbühel was an amazing town, just beautiful. Can't even imagine what it would be like to be in there in the winter. Hope you guys enjoyed. I had a great time. It was a real treat uh, to be able to spend some time in Germany and Austria and see so many things. We crammed a ton in. On the flip side, I'm not gonna lie, I really missed my wife and son and, and even Judd toward the end, but it was a great uh, chance to get away, take a vacation, clear my head after the silliness of everything that happened before with the move. And we're super excited. We've got an Arduino Wednesday widget for Halloween coming up. We're gonna start filming the tooling videos with Carl from Lakeshore Carbide on, on sort of the everything you wanna know about carbide tooling in the shop. Hopefully get the 440 coming here in a few weeks. Lots of good stuff to come, folks. For thanks, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. Take care. See you soon.